covering what is uh, like computer vision in augmented reality let's just first uh, talk about the knowledge etiquette so first is punctuality please try to join the session five minutes per so that you're not disturbing the session and nor you're missing anything second one is feedback please provide a constructive feedback for the presenters like it is very much beneficial for us like what what we are missing or what audience is requiring uh, and you'll also get a feedback after the session so please try to fill it uh, fill it for us third is uh, silent mode please try to keep your mobile devices on silent and yourself as well and we'll be having a q a after the session so if there is any questions doubt we can discuss it then right uh, fourth one is avoid disturbance. Please do not do any unwanted chit chat during the uh, session. <clears throat> so let's just get started with. Our agenda will be introduction to computer vision recap. So this is an basically a uh, continuation of our presentation, which we gave earlier. It was about computer vision. So we will be giving you a small recap for the ones who haven't joined us like in the earlier presentation. Second would be what is augmented reality and virtual reality. Third is how does computer vision enhance augmented reality? Fourth is computer vision overlapping augmented reality. And then it will be followed by a demo. So yeah. Now what is computer vision recap? <clears throat> Computer vision uh, basically is a field of artificial intelligence that enables computers and systems to drive meaningful information from them, like from the digital images, videos, and other visual in, uh, inputs. The concept of uh, computer vision is based on teaching computers to process an image at a pixel level and understand it. Like how, uh, now how does it work, right? So computer vision technology tends to mimic the same way our human uh, brain works. So basically, computer vision is all about pattern recognition. So to train computers, what we do is we feed them with a lot of images, like millions of images, like as much as possible, we give them the images and uh, the, then subject to any uh, any software or any technique or any algorithms, computer, uh, computer hunt down those patterns and then uh, the system is formed. So for an example, like um, if you feed a computer with millions of images of a cat, then what the computer does is it will uh, it will analyze the shape, the distance, the, the colors of the photographs. And there are many other factors. Then uh, then the system is prepared. And when now uh, you will uh, you will uh, give a computer an image, it will it will identify that whether uh, whether that image you have given is a cat or not. So. This is how the entire thing works. Like there is a lot of math involved in it, but uh, to keeping it uh, as a brief recap, we're just uh, telling you in a like broader way. Now coming to the application of computer vision. So we have uh, earlier, like we have talked about like self-driving cars, augmented and mixed reality, facial recognition, healthcare. These all are the applications of computer vision. Coming to the challenges. So sometimes like it's there is an in, uh, inadequate hardware, poor quality of data is one of the major uh, challenge what we face is and proper uh, knowledge of domain. Like sometimes we do not have a proper knowledge of that domain, right? So this is a small recap, which we discussed in our first presentation. Now coming to the next slide, what is augmented reality and virtual reality? Yeah. So augmented reality are digital elements to a live view, like in a broader way, if you like uh, if you if I give you an example to explain this better. So uh, in Snapchat, we apply filters to a face by camera. So basically what we are doing is we are adding a digital element to a live image. So that is known as augmented reality. There was a very well known app like it was a game which maybe few of you have played also. It was a Pokemon Go uh, app. Right. So it was also a wonder of augmented reality only it what it was doing. It was just adding a digital em, uh, element to your live images, to your live uh, video. So that that concept is known as augmented reality. Coming to uh, sorry, um, the location, uh, previous slide only. Yeah. Now coming to what is virtual reality. On the other hand, virtual reality is it replaces it replaces the entire real world environment to a stimulated one right 
so there are some devices uh, for, uh, for which we use to get into the vr uh, vr zone which is like samsung uh, gear vr htc vive google daydream view and there are like many so these headsets uh, these headsets are actually used when we want to like uh, escape from the real world environment go into the into the entire uh, stimulated one like uh, there uh, i can give you an example like when you go to malls and there are game centers so there are uh, there are games where they just give you a headset and you go into a stimulated uh, environment of playing right so that is also an example of virtual reality only next slide so uh, this is a pictorial representation for virtual reality and augmented and uh, merged reality so here you can see also virtual reality is basically there's a person who, who is having a headset and it is going entirely entirely into a stimulated environment skipping their skipping the uh, real world environment so that is known as virtual reality now coming to the augmented reality as you can see the person is uh, actually having a phone and it is adding a it is adding in a digital digital elements to the live uh, photo or the video so that is known as augmented reality coming to the merged reality so uh, merged reality is actually it's a kind of augmented reality where objects from both virtual and real world are merged and they interact like for an example imagine you're playing a basketball game like and you uh, you pick a ball from your room and that and bring that to the game so that kind of thing is known as uh, merged reality and uh, there is a project actually going on uh, like in intel named as uh, alloy so they are also they are using uh, merge uh, merge reality right now like we can uh, you guys can read about it more if you are interested now uh, augmented or virtual reality so uh, a direct comparison of the two technologies so vr creates an immersive virtual environment while ar augments a real world scene so we have actually discussed this but uh, like it's like uh, vr is actually uh, going into a stimulated environment and skipping the entire real world environment where in ar you're just adding a element in your uh, in your real world scene only right VR is seventy five percent virtual, while AR is only twenty five percent virtual. VR requires a headset device, as we discussed, and uh, like in the earlier slides. And while AR does not, VR users move in completely fictional world, while AR users are in contact with the real world. Yeah. So these are some of the. Uh, uh, the uh, differentiation between these two terms now how does computer vision enhance augmented reality yeah so uh, so basically what happens is uh, augmented reality can sometimes lead to not detect the location of the object properly because uh, what uh, what computer like what augmented uh, reality is using it is using gps uh, to locate locate the objects in a in a live image or in a video so sometimes uh, gps tracking doesn't uh, like it is not accurate because there are there is a lot of crowd in the image or there are many other factors so in that kind of situations uh, computer vision help can be very helpful so like uh, when we train the model uh, with a lot of images so that in that way computer vision can be very much helpful uh, to enhance augmented reality so this was one of the example where uh, that uh, where computer vision is enhances augmented reality um now uh, so this is computer vision overlapping augmented reality i uh, i think uh, like the durgesh will be going forward with this yeah thank you tanishka so like from moving forward let's like uh, take it up to like uh, how computer vision is overlapping augmented reality and how like the application areas we are going to explore on so the application a, uh, of the augmented reality and the computer vision uh, so there are like multiple uh, you know di uh, different domains where uh, we are seeing these uh, happening in a life uh, life uh, li lifetime right so ar and vr has an expand 
expanded reach to almost every industry like uh, travel health healthcare gaming e-commerce uh, we could see like uh, uh, when we uh, are shopping on these platforms like uh, flipkart and amazon uh, for some product mostly the furniture ones uh, we have an option to view that furniture in our room like so uh, it start started our camera and like it places the furniture when uh, where we want to and gives a look, look and feel how the furniture will be looked uh in that uh, specific location so yeah uh air is like huge hit among all the industries uh, uh like healthcare as we see there's an uh, gif uh present over here how like in this is an example of an augmented reality like we can uh take in a feel of the human uh, lungs and then we can uh, observe it in a, mo a much better way so like uh we uh, uh as mentioned by uh, as mentioned by tanishka like we are uh, like immerses a person into a virtual world st stimulating their like real presence through the senses right uh, there is there this stimulation will require uh, sources for content like hardware headsets and gloves like so uh, there comes the uh, like uh, here the computer vision comes into the picture to help and to enhance our experience uh, our experience in the uh, mixed reality virtual reality or augmented reality also these are the like uh, these are the some of the cases where we are seeing right now the application of the computer vision and the augmented reality if we uh, talk about autonomous cars and security monitoring healthcare diagnostics and image and face recognition and other biometric authentications as well so computer vision uh, like uh, aids virtual reality with robust vision capabilities like uh, there's an uh, uh, algorithm which is uh, called as uh, uh, slam s l a m which stands for sim simultaneous localization and mapping right so computer vision helps uh, augmented and mixed reality to you know identify the uh, features uh, and uh, like find out the feature description and the localization of uh, the Im uh, features uh, uh, about the image or the video input that we are giving right so computer vision and the uh, virtual uh, virtual and augmented reality works together to make the products more sophisticated and user responsive okay, so let's move to, like the first uh as i mentioned like we are uh seeing live examples of the like uh the, this combination of uh computer vision and augmented reality in the real life world scenario like uh if you talk about the test uh tesla cars right the self-driving uh, cars which are really famous these days so those you uh those cars also uses like uh augmented reality like it, uh, if we, uh, if you have seen any of the videos of driving the car, it like projected uh, and uh, digital object. If the human is, if the human a or any car or any, or any of the object is detected in front of the, uh, in front of the car, it will like projected an object in the screen. Like this person is present uh, in front of the car. So the data kept like recording through different uh, cam uh, hardware cameras and it uh, it is used uh, for like enhancing the experiences right so comparison with uh, uh, it, the pictures taken from the different angles are like fed to the softwares and it uh, processes in the real time uh, you know real time uh, simulation for the road right um, okay so the next example is like for uh, uh augmented reality in the computer vision and in the security monitoring right so so we have like nowadays uh, everywhere a cctv cameras like installed right and uh, uh, we can use this augmented reality and uh, uh, computer vision together to uh, monitor the security in a better way uh, if we, um, if something catches on fire like uh, or is, uh, there is an uh, you know uh, a thief uh, roaming around your house like with an intention to you know uh, uh, what do you say uh, come in and like theft uh, 
uh, with the intent of theft so we can you know uh, this augmented reality uh, the combination of augmented reality and computer vision will help us to like keep our house more uh, you know more, more safe right so there is an uh, a project that is running up can be like ex uh, explained as a beautiful example right so it is an uh, autonomous security system that protects people and the valuable assets like right okay so augmented reality uh, like in the healthcare uh, in the uh, and uh, in the healthcare industry so this uh, i think uh, in this is uh, uh, proved uh, uh, augmented reality have like in proven uh, really helpful in you know healthcare industry uh, it really uh, it really helping in detecting the tumor cells cancer cells and all the uh, you know uh, lots of diseases uh, and doctors could like uh, more accurately can uh, you know identify and diagnose the disease like it helps us uh, detecting the cancer cells in uh, in our skin and as we have seen in the previous uh, image uh, image as well like uh, how uh, we are uh, we are have a better you know experience of the human skeleton and then the lungs has been uh, uh, taken out from the uh, image and then we have uh, you know analyzed it so yeah uh, uh, so healthcare uh, in the healthcare industry uh, this is a link proven and really helpful uh, for them like computer uh, both the blend of computer vision and augmented reality okay so in the uh, uh, face recognition system as we have lots of uh, you know common examples uh, 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 sorry live examples that we are seeing in a daily life uh, rather we talk about instagram filters or snapchat filters and then we have like uh, our uh, in our phone for facial unlock right so what it uh, do is like computer vision uh, takes our uh, 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 you know face as an input uh, and it like identify the uh, features from our face and then uh, the location of the features in the face and according uh, the location will be like uh, passed to uh, passed to the augmented reality and uh, so the we talk about like snapchat filters so those uh, only uh, only on the, those specific locations no, uh, on the face our uh, filters got like appeared so how this uh, like our face got recognized our location of face got recognized in the whole video feed and the camera and our filter got applied on that specific location so yeah um, uh, and if you talk about like uh, in the uh, it's also a continuation of the face uh, because face recognition also considered as a biometric authentication so yeah uh, if we have like uh, there's an you know uh, app, uh, one of the great uh, applications uh, of the computer vision with ai powered uh, facial recognition like uh, as for now work from home has been a new uh, you know uh, new normal in our uh, IT industry, so everybody is working from home. So there's an like uh, solution to that, like uh, for ma uh, verifying the employee uh, uniquely. So they 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 are using uh, their biological retina to verify the identity, right? So there's an application for called Face Face Rage. So it has like a easy to use and scalable face uh, facial recognition ap uh, application, and it has like um, different uh, other uh, you know services as well. We can like try it on. Okay, so let's move to the demo part. So I have. so we have like uh, prepared a demo uh, like we are going to put you know uh, uh, we are going to uh, take an image as an input and then we can uh, we are going to put an uh, different uh, objects on the uh, on the uh, on it right like uh, as for the, take an example for the filters snapchat filters that we use like the output would be 
this like uh, on the surface plane of this image we are putting a chair on it so the procedure would be followed like uh, we are taking a reference image like we are going to take a reference image like his the we have put in the markings over here uh, and we have like different uh, source images as well for the data set and we are going to extract the feature from the reference image and uh, uh, the uh, we are going to uh, extract the features of the source image as well then we do the feature ma uh, matching and there is an, there is a phenomena for a homography uh, for uh, you know putting um, uh, for estimation of the location and then putting a uh, uh, Ob, uh, ob, uh, object on the surface of the image right and then we are going to the pose estimation and then we are going to the uh, we are going to display the final output so these are the all supported libraries that we are like using on so uh, as mentioned like we have two set of images one is the reference image and then we have a like set of three or four uh, images for the source image that is i just give you an yeah. this would be our source image and this is going to our uh, sorry this is our reference image and all these are going to be our source images and uh, sorry okay so here we are reading the uh, reference image and the source image then we do the recognition of uh, the uh, features in our image right so we uh, there are going to three step process for the recognition of the features uh, and then first uh, first will be the feature detection then we are going to find out the de description of the feature then we do the feature match matching right so we uh, we are going to recognize uh, the reference image uh, uh, the features of the reference image and uh, using computer vision right so in the feature detection so it's like a low uh, you know low level image processing operation so it is like uh, it usually uh, uh, performed as the first operation on the any image that we load is uh, when we uh, you know load any images to, uh, to for processing uh, so we first do as a feature detection for it to uh, how we are going to like uh, identify this is uh, the uh, this is what we are looking in through our uh, bare naked eyes, how the system is going to recognize it. So for that, we have uh, we identify and detect the features in the image, and examines every pixels uh, so, uh, to see that if there is a feature present at that pixel. So that feature is uh, later used, uh, you know, uh, going to later used with um, mapping of reference image with the source images, right? So there is like uh, several uh, techniques uh, for uh, feature, uh, feature detection. We uh, detect the edges, we detect the corners, we uh, detect the blobs and the scale, rotation, brightness change, uh, all the things. Because if you talk about the brightness change and the color con contrasting, like for uh, the red, suppose that we have a, a different color, two colors in uh, present in our image, like one uh, is red the other is gray so the pixel would uh, uh, would be a diff uh, will be different for red and gray so that uh, we are going to like uh, identify through that difference that this image uh, this color is red and that is going to be a gray and then we are going to identify the location for that color on the image uh, after detection the feature the local, uh, you know, the local patch uh, around the feature is uh, extracted, and uh, it will it will be stored, and uh, uh, it will be stored, and that uh, uh, that will be called as a feature vector. So once we and you know uh, identify the feature, we are going to uh, you know uh, find the description of it. So there are like many uh, algorithms present, uh, like one is like SF, SIFT, SURF brief fast and we are going to use orb uh, here uh, to you know uh, get the feature description uh, from the image so 
all these are like uh, the coding part the we have like uh, uh, created an object for the o uh, orb algorithm and then we are detecting the description from uh, of the reference image and the source image and then we are like uh, comparing it like as you see here these are the features has been identified uh, in the reference image and in the source image so after uh, this recognition we are going to like uh, do a feature ma uh, matching like uh, we are going to match uh, the features from our reference image to our source image right so at this point like we have the feature uh, feature vector for both the reference image and the source image and then we are going to use a, a, a brute force matcher to you know match these features right so we have like a uh, put in threshold for minimum matches uh, uh, if the minimum matches is 30 then uh, like uh, the, it could be considered as like both the images are uh, you know same so we are just uh, uh, creating the objects and all these are uh, in the back end there is a lot of maths running around so just skip that like here you can see that these has been done as a mapping like as you see that this red lines is corresponding to this image and all the location has been like identified and the, the there's a perfect mapping has been created of both the reference image and the source image then it comes to the part for homography like uh, uh, after uh, you know considering that the uh, reference image was for, uh, was found in the source image like it's uh, when we do uh, uh, when we have like mapped our reference image and uh, uh, source image so yeah it uh, the next step would be like to find a way to map the points uh, of the plane of the surface of re reference image to the plane of the uh, source image so this transformation would uh, is known as like homography so him, uh, homography is like a 2d uh, projective transformation that maps points to uh, of one place uh, of, of one plane or one uh, one place to another plane uh, so this is the equation for it so we are just going to use a, a open cv uh, uh, method which is called find homography to you know find out the set of the points from both the images and then we are going to the pers uh, transformation uh, using the method which is called perspective transform uh, perspective transform so the homography between uh, the two images contains in uh, in layers like uh, the uh, the image that has been like like map these lines as uh, these features that have uh, been identified as a, called as in layers and all the other features that is not identified or we could like not map would be considered as an outlier so we are going to you know uh, do homography on it so we are like mapping uh, uh, of one uh, image uh, uh, one plane from one image to the uh, other plane of the uh, source image right then we like the uh, do the pose estimation for it so we have uh, uh, <clears throat> the we have to set the camera parameters like uh, uh, how we are like taking the in, uh, input from the video feed or the Im, uh, you know image feed from the camera and the parameters will be ca calibrated accordingly so the calibra calibration matrix uh, will be like uh, this you can see uh, over here and um, the image uh, the object we are going to place over our you know source image uh, could be like mm, different uh, different object uh, we could like place on there are like some reference sites uh, uh, over here mentioned over here like wavefront uh, claro.io obj file loader so from uh, if if you visit these uh, sites we can get different object files for different object uh, objects right like chair fox buffalo um and there are man, many others right dog uh, so yeah and um, so for now like we are uh, loading our object here as a uh, we are loading the chair object here we are setting up the camera parameters and then we are like uh, creating the, uh, you know uh, ca calculating the projection matrix and then we are rendering the image and uh, then we are like 
uh, projecting, uh, you know, uh, put, uh, first identifying the minimum matches, and then we are uh, we are going to put our object over the image. So as you see here, like uh, we have the uh, on the source image that we have, uh, we have like put an on a uh, chair on it. So uh, for now, I believe we have options uh, for the models. We have like three options here only the chair, the fox, and the house object. So we can try those. But uh, for each object, we'll like do some reconfiguration uh, to get an uh, uh, exact fit. So uh, let's just try and change here as for like fox one. We just restart the kernel. Yeah, so as a fox is a little big for the image, so we are getting the full legs of it. So yeah, uh, we have to do some recalibration uh, around it, like according to the feature matrix that we have. So yeah, so that's all for the demo. Uh, I thank you. Uh, if you have any questions now, if anyone have any questions, they can ask on. Hello. Yes, you're not able to get. Okay. Do we have any questions regarding computer vision or augmented reality or related to the demo which they gave showed? I'm thinking the silence as no. Yeah, guys, if you have any doubt, any questions, any queries regarding to the CV or AR, VR, or any code snippet that you have seen, you can just ask them or ping them in person as well. They'll help you out to understand the concept more clearly, if not. And yeah, that's it. And thank you, Durgesh and Tanishka, for this session. It was really wonderful. The Demo was also good, and it seems like you have practiced a lot. So, yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pranay. Yep, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys, for joining in. Thank you, Durgesh. Thank you, Tanishka.